Uh, RJ asks, uh, and I won't read the whole thing to you, but basically I have programs on Dan John University like uh, for easy strength for Olympic lifting, easy strength for fat loss with Olympic lifting, uh, various uh, programs for Olympic lifting in there that are all pretty simple. They're, they're generally, uh, you know, I was joking the other day, someone got on me online about the way I coach the Olympic lifts. Okay. If you're the silver medalist at the Olympics and you're trying to add 10 kilos to your, your lift, you know, you're, you're clean and jerking, uh, 220 and you want to get to 230. Yeah. Maybe I'm not the guy to talk to, uh, you know, there might be better and brighter people and I probably don't even speak your language. So that wouldn't really help you that much anyway. But if you're a general enthusiast, if you're using the Olympic lifts for sports, if you're using the Olympic lifts for, well, for general conditioning, like I think still has a value, then I, I think I can help you. So in my programs, RJ's found a very good small issue. And the issue is this. I tend to have like in one of the programs, I think, let's just say I think it's Wednesday. And it says Wednesday, squat, snatch, three sets of three. There's, a, there's other things too. And then it says three singles in the clean and jerk. Well, if you do the math, that's nine snatches, but only three clean and jerks. And he began to notice that I, I do that a lot. Well, the reason I like this question is it does kind of crack open uh, a, a bigger question, and that's the whole question of reps. And uh, the quick answer is this. <laughs> well, there's, and there's two parts. First, late in my career as an Olympic lifter when I was good. Now, I still Olympic lift, but I mean, frankly, you know, <laughs> my goal now is to clean and jerk 105 kilos, which is 231. Um, of course, at age 65, that's good. But, you know, I used to clean 182.5, which is 402. Uh, I've done 385, 175 kilos many, many, many times in meets. Uh, so, uh, you know, things have, things have changed just things have changed a little bit on the load side. Uh, the, 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 there's a couple other points, but let me, let me say focused on RJ's question. When I see the clean and jerk, when I was young and I would do those heavy 175 kilo clean and jerks in training, I put the weight down, I breathe. And I began to notice over time, I couldn't recover from those lifts. So late in my career, I quit doing clean and jerks, except at contests, part two. I would clean in training, I would do jerks in training, and I'd only clean and jerk in competition because it took so long for me to recover from. And then the second major point would be this, is the clean and jerk is two movements. So in a sense, when you're doing three singles, in a sense, when you're doing three singles in a clean and jerk, you're doing kind of doubles in a certain way. And I know that that doesn't make a lot of sense until you, know, you, you make certain lifts or you train a long time. But here's what I want you to think about, is when we look at all the world of lifting, reps change not only by the movement, but by the also by the equipment. Um, whereas, I have this thing called the 10,000 swing challenge. It's a great thing. 20 days, 500 swings a day, pretty doable because the kettlebell swing and the kettlebell snatch really work well with high repetition training. Um, you can do, well, I have a, we do one thing with, with the people getting ready for the kettlebell cert where they do 300 snatches in one day. Basically, it's three sets of 100. That's a lot of volume. Uh, you know, 500 swings. That's a lot of volume. As I step back, I look at some other exercises, and I guess you could do uh, 500 swing, uh, pardon me, squats in a day. You could do 500 deadlifts in a day. I'm just not sure it would really have much value. I mean, it might be nice for a little challenge or some way to stay, you know, keep your keep yourself lubricated on a road trip, you know, keep your joints feeling good or whatever. But no one seriously does uh, those kinds of workouts. Uh, I mean, I know people do them and I get that. So when you look at things like the ballistic kettlebell world, high reps are appropriate. Now let's bring in machines. Uh, 
if you're doing leg extensions, and I'm a big fan of leg extensions, leg curls, uh, there's different row and uh, pull down machines I think have great value. There are some press machines I think have some great value. Um, there's that one, uh, there's a company that has this row machine that actually really feels good. Um, I used to have a membership o over at one of the clubs in Salt Lake. And uh, I, when I recover from injuries, I love doing machine training. Machine training, to me, lends itself to, you know, those higher reps. If I'm doing an exercise like leg curls, I like to use Art Devaney's idea of you do a set of 15 slow, then you do it, 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 and then you change pins and go right back a set of eight medium, and then you put a heavier load on real heavy load, and you try to ugh, get three, four, five reps any way you possibly can. You know, I like that. I don't know if I've ever seen anyone do that, you know, like with front squats, you know, uh, 135 for 15. 225 for eight, 315 for as many. I, I, I mean, it might work. I don't know if I would do it. So you've got the kettlebell ballistics, high reps. You've got the machine world, higher reps. Uh, and there's lots of reasons for it. The machines very often take care of your balance. And you can, you know, you can push harder with one arm. You can have a lot more shaking with the machines. When you move into the exercises like the Olympic lifts and the power lifts, and I'll use Dave Davis's classic six here, the clean and press, the snatch, the clean and jerk, the Olympic lifts, and then the power lifts, power lifts, squat, bench press, and deadlift. Generally, you find if you're going heavy, you don't have a ton of reps. Uh, Stefan Court, the great German powerlifting coach, and he used to have that three sets of three program, which I thought was really a good idea in the three power lifts in, in Somebody wanted to explain it to me as the three by three by three by three program. Three days a week, three lifts, three sets of three. You know, you're looking around a total of less than 10 reps. Years ago, I came up with this concept I called the rule of 10, is that when you're lifting on those big engine lifts, and uh, I would include um, all six of those exercises, and I have an asterisk before we go too far, is that. You know, if you can do 10 heavy squat snatches in a workout, you're done. Um, 10 clean and jerks would be really hard, I think. Um, serious 10 deadlifts. I, I never don't think I could ever do it. One of my favorite stories was at the uh, the big uh, Olympic uh, powerlifting meet that I did in 1980 here in, in Utah. And the uh, well, yeah, get ready backstage, uh, Greg Shepard from Bigger, Faster, Stronger and I, we're the only two people left in the warm-up room. And he said, uh, what are you going to open with? And I said, I don't know. I go, what are you going to open with? And he said a number. And I said, oh, I'll just go heavier. And uh, because I had never, ever trained on the deadlift, because A, I'm born to hinge, and I'm an Olympic lifter, so the deadlift's pretty easy. And about 10, 15 years later, he was telling the story. Yeah, I was with this guy one time at a powerlifting meet, and he didn't even know what he was going to open with on the deadlift. I go, I go, Greg, that was me. He goes, and it was just kind of one of those funny things because we knew each other, but you know, sometimes you bump into people and you re-meet them later, and you, but you don't remember every story. I said, there's an asterisk and here's the asterisk on reps with the squat though, things are different. The rules do change with the squat, which makes the squat for me sometimes the most dangerous of all exercises to talk about, uh, with the squat, if you're a, a thrower or an Olympic lifter. Uh, generally, keep those squat numbers down. Uh, if you're a if you're a, if you're a power lifter, you might say, "I'm not squatting, you know, five sets of five. I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to do triples, doubles, singles, or, or whatever you. Try. It doesn't matter." Yet, for hypertrophy, high rep back squats with heavy weights is the, probably the single best thing I ever coached uh, for back squats. Um, years ago, I got good advice from a, one of our national Olympic lifting coaches. He was watching the way I was training. He said that I should never do any less than 10 reps in the back squat because the way I was built and the way I was moved, heavy back squats didn't carry at all over to what I was doing on the platform. Funny thing is that coach was right. And I was a little stubborn at the time to take good advice from other coaches. That was a mistake. I later, I started doing tens in the back squat and higher. And I thrived on those higher rep back squats. 
So back squats, they get their own number. So what I'm trying to get across is this. Sometimes when you pick an exercise, you've got to step back before you say, I'm doing reps and sets with this. If you told me you're doing five sets of two in the kettlebell swing, that would make no sense to me at all. Kettlebell swings, kettlebell ballistics, those are much higher rep numbers. Uh, when you get to exercises like on the machines, those would be more in that 15 to 25 rep scheme. Obviously, eights are great, tens are great. Ten, there are no bad numbers, but you can do more reps on machines. When it comes to the six traditional, the Olympic lifts and power lifts, generally the reps are the rule of 10 or less with the asterisk of the squat because you can do high rep squat squats and you can do those heavy grinding singles and get benefits out of both for some people. So when I look at an exercise like the clean and jerk, RJ, I generally for most adults, I separate out the two lifts mentally and count that as each rep is a double, even though you're cleaning it and jerking it. When it comes to reps and sets in the weight room, you always have to remember what equipment am I using? Kettlebells, ballistics, higher reps, machines, those hypertrophy numbers, the big power lifts and Olympic lifts, the rule of 10. And that's a simple little formula I just I gave you, but it seems to be true most of the time for most people. And most of the time for most people is uh, a pretty good thing to kind of remember.